Welcome to the December 15th meeting of the Murfreesboro City Council. Merry Christmas. Uh, Mr. Eddie Smotherman has the prayer and the pledge. If you would, please bow your head. Lord, thank you for this day and thank you for our many blessings. We're so humbled to come before you tonight and, and ask for uh, forgiveness for our sins. And uh, We come to you with heavy hearts tonight uh, as we still uh, don't have Doug here with us tonight. And uh, we, uh, we, we pray that, uh, for Doug and we pray for his family as uh, he continues to battle cancer. We uh, pray for those children uh, across the world who who I know this is the Christmas season and it's supposed to be such a joyful time as we celebrate your son's birth, but we uh, understand that there are children at St. Thomas and St. Jude's and across the country that uh, are suffering tonight. And, and we pray that you keep your healing hands around those children. Please uh, accept our thanks for delivering and returning our firefighters uh, successfully to Gatlinburg. And uh, thank you so much for the service that uh, that they provided. We appreciate our police officers and all the, the commitment that they have for our community. We thank you for all of our employees, the city employees that do such a fantastic job year round. Thank you so much for the people uh, and the citizens of Murfreesboro and this wonderful city that we live in. It, uh, it's a pleasure to uh, get to enjoy it every day. And these things we pray, in Christ's name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God under God, with indivisible and with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, I know many of us have had the opportunity over the past week to be able to go visit uh, Vice Mayor Young and got a chance to, you know, we had our, our groundbreaking for the North, Rust, North Murfreesboro Greenway yesterday. And uh, in true Doug fashion, he wanted to be there, but had the opportunity to sit and talk with him. Uh, and, you know, even sometimes when we're, we're, not feeling the best you you want to get down and doug's the only person i've ever met that was telling every, all of us how proud he was of of us in murfreesboro when he's sitting there uh, going through what he's going through so we want to make sure and keep the young family in our prayers there uh, god broke the mold when they made that man you, you you will not find better than him uh chief folks i want to put you on the spot if you don't mind if you'd come to the to, to the podium um now that the the fire in Sevier County and Gatlinburg is over with, um, I think it would be good for the residents to know how many firefighters that we had at, at the course of a week deployed there and maybe um, let the, the viewing public know exactly what they did and I know how, how proud you are of them. Yes, sir. Uh, as you know, I'm involved in this statewide mutual aid system, uh, fire service mutual aid system through the Tennessee Fire Chiefs Association. So we started receiving calls to activate the system um, while I was eating dinner uh, Monday night uh, that the fire started. And we uh, immediately upon the notifications, we knew that it was gonna be a very large event. And uh, so I, I deployed three of our apparatus from here uh, to assist that evening, not knowing that during the night that there was gonna be a request for some 92 apparatus from across the state just overnight. Uh, so. Our, our shift that was on duty that night, a shift, actually deployed off from duty, and so they were in the stations, and, and I, I made a call to Commander Maynard and told him to fuel the apparatus or make sure the apparatus were fueled and to get some clothes packed for the, for the firefighters that were going or a go pack uh, ready to go, and, and those firefighters actually left from shift. Um, we did get the opportunity for those firefighters to switch out if they had other commitments that morning with other firefighters that could go uh, if necessary. Uh, but they left Monday night at about 8.30 and arrived uh, in the uh, Sevierville area at about 2.30 in the morning, um, Tuesday morning. They, they had a little bit of a chance to get a, a couple hour break and then they were activated up to Gatlinburg uh, to start firefighting immediately uh, up there. And, and our main contingent up there uh, the first couple of days was structural firefighting. 
fighting the structure fires that were going on in the condominium and apartment complexes there um, in Gatlinburg. We, um, we actually, on that initial deployment, we had uh, 14 personnel. We uh, switched a couple of personnel out on Tuesday, um, but we sent three to switch out two, so we would have five on each apparatus. Uh, we kept a contingent of 15 personnel up there all the way through the weekend, that following weekend, and, and everybody arrived back uh, to Murfreesboro the following Monday. So in, in total, we had 50 personnel, and including Assistant Chief Jernigan and Commander Swan as command staff personnel, uh, and Chaplain Douglas. And I can't tell you enough um, how much Chaplain Douglas did, both working in the shelters uh, in and around the Gatlinburg area for the people that were displaced that had lost their homes, as well as attending to the needs of the firefighters, both for Gatlinburg and other agencies that were doing search operations in the damaged structures. Uh, looking for persons uh, that were unaccounted for. And so it was a, a major deployment on our behalf for the, uh, the City of Murfreesboro Fire Department as well as the State Fire Service in general. Uh, we sent over 150 different fire departments up there, uh, more than 250 pieces of equipment, and uh, several hundred firefighters uh, to the Gatlinburg area that were from outside of Sevier County. And uh, it was a major uh, action. Our personnel very much so enjoyed being able to help um, the citizens of Gatlinburg and you never can tell when a, a situation is going to occur here that we may need help from outside agencies as well and and providing that assistance is uh, what we do the best. And Chief, it, I know you told us that if someone, I guess the last really three or four days that if someone called 911 in, in Gatlinburg, who would answer the call? Uh, the Murfreesboro Fire Department. So we were, we were covering their stations while their personnel their personnel had the desire, which I understand our personnel would want to do the same thing here, and I would want our personnel doing the same thing here. Gatlinburg personnel wanted to be doing the searches on the residences there in Gatlinburg uh, for unaccounted persons. Um, and so we covered their stations and answered calls out of their stations uh, from Thursday through Sunday night. We appreciate you and your team. Thank you very much. We appreciate your support. Hey, Chief, while you're up there, just so we can get our money's worth out of you. Um, yes, sir. How did uh, everything go yesterday with the chlorine? Uh, uh, that, that was in the county. We actually uh, I received a call from Chief Farley uh, on up in the morning around 9.30. Uh, he requested our one of our ladder trucks uh, to the scene and some personnel, and we gladly sent that request. Um, it was shortly after that that um, the incident kind of um, was waning down, and, and we uh, got everything under control along with Rutherford County Fire and then we're able to assist them with that one crew of personnel that he requested on the interstate. Awesome, thank you for what you do. Thank you. Okay, you have the consent agenda in front of you. There's a corrected consent agenda item. <laughs> yes, we have, uh, you have on your, on your desk in front of you from uh, Pam Russell, the assistant HR director, uh, on the stop loss, you have a change in that. So any motion, if you'd make that with the corrected consent agenda, that would be great. Move for approval with the corrected uh, amendment to it. Second. Motion is second. Ms. <clears throat> Wright, we'll call the roll. Ms. Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Hi, you've got the meeting for three minutes in front of you, the November 3rd, 2016 regular meeting, the November 10th, 2016 special meeting, and the November 10th, 2016 regular meeting. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second, Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move into second readings and consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 16 OZ 29, a zoning area along New Salem, Salem Highway is commercial fringe CF, CF district and residential zero lot line RZ district 2016-415. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. 
Consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 16 OZ 51 to zone 21.5 acres along West Thompson Lane is planned residential development PRD district simultaneous with annexation rezone approximately 1.5 acres from single family residential 15 RS 15 district to planned residential development PRD district and to rezone approximately 1.1 acres from college and university CU district to planned residential development PR district Caroline Farm Steve, Stephen Dotson applicant 2016-445 and Again, I'm going to uh, list to abstain on this. I have business relationships with Mr. Dotson that I need to abstain out of an abundance of caution. Okay. Uh, also, Shane, um, Matthew Blomley, if you would come up. I got, I got a quick question for you because I know this was talked about at the last meeting, which I wasn't present at, but um, during the conversation, uh, the presentation was given and discussed that this lane would be a two-lane road now going through the neighborhood as opposed to a three-lane road. Will we still have three lanes at the stacking lane and uh, the property closest to Thompson Lane because I, I, I don't want us to just have a two-lane road there. Right, to get a, to get a, a, a right out, left right. out. and. Uh, I, I haven't looked at the book to make sure, but I, I feel certain that that would be the case. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Mulchin with SEC is actually the designer on that plan. Okay. And, and he, he is uh, nodding in the affirmative that that would be the case. Do you have any idea how many feet we're talking about for that right turn lane, stacking lane? I know, I know there's one lot there, I guess, on the front of the property uh, closest to Thompson Lane. Thank you, Rob Mulch, SEC. Um, it'll be probably like two to 250 feet. You know, it'll be evaluated. Uh, our engineers will design it, and then Sam and them, the engineering will approve it. But usually, two to 250 feet of stacking is the you know the typical distance for that type of intersection. Okay, that's exactly what I need to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If there's no other questions about it, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion to second. Ms. Wright, go call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Abstain. Consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 16 OZ 53 to zone an area along Manchester Pike and Dilton Mackin Road, which have been proposed to be annexed to the City of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, to plan residential development PRD District, Mankin Point, Old South Properties, Inc., applicant 2016 447. Move for approval. Second. Motion to second. Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Consider for passage on second and final reading ordinance 16 LZ 55 to rezone an area located along Osborne Lane to Commercial Fringe CF District 2016 431. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, you'll call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Moving to first readings and consider for recommendations the Water and Se Sewer Board amend Chapter 33 regarding use of septic tank affluent pump systems, step systems. Mr. Gore. Mayor, City Mr. Council, thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight. Uh, this is a follow-up from uh, the time I came and met with you on August 11th. Uh, a proposed site off of Dilton Mankin Road just outside the city limits uh, brought the need for the city of Murfreesboro to consider become operators of STEP systems, STEP standing for the septic tank effluent pumps. Um, the Water and Sewer Department's primary role uh, in, the, in the responsibility of operating and maintaining these STEP systems was to incentivize the voluntary request uh, of these property owners into the city uh, and subsequently build to city standards. So we brought some design criteria to you and some conditions under which we would consider uh, offering step service, uh, which is kind of our first foray into this uh, treatment system. But tonight uh, we're bringing up the ordinance revisions that would be necessary to set the rate structure and also uh, exclude single family units from what we call connection fees or system development charges from the ordinance. So what you have before you in the, in the ordinance uh, this evening are those two things. We would look at a, a collection of fees with a flat rate 
monthly uh, fee of $28 per month plus $2 per thousand gallons of all consumption. This mirrors a consolidated utility district's fee structure for step system service. Also, uh, as I mentioned, the exclusion of single family units and single family uh, unit equivalents would no longer be char or uh, any SFUs inside of our special uh, sewer assessments. Those would be excluded because they are not, quote, buying into the capacity of our centralized system. These uh, step systems are decentralized and are built uh, exclusively for that particular development. So no buy into our capacity is necessary. So I'm available uh, to answer any questions. Do we have a PowerPoint to discuss on this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I really wanted to, but I thought, you know, with an ordinance, this is kind of boring. I liked your Christmas PowerPoint. That was exceptional. Good. Very Thank good. you. Did a very good job. Thank you. There's a lot of moving parts. It took a lot of activity this year at the Water and Sewer Department. Very good. All right, you have this ordinance 16065 amending chapter 33 water and sewer section 331, 33-32, and 33-50 regarding use of step systems. <clears throat> I'll move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Ms. Gels Harris. Aye. Mr. LaVance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank Darren, you. Darren, please let your staff know. Merry Christmas. We appreciate the hard work they do. I'll let them know. Thank you. Item 8 has been pulled from the agenda. We'll move to new business. Consider for approval, renewal of certificate of compliance for Gautam A. Patel at 96 Liquor and Wine, 2019A, Las Casas Pike. Ms. Wright, is everything in order? Yes, Mayor. Uh, this is a renewal, and the paperwork we have is in order. It, this is done every two years, and it will go to the state after uh, and if you approve the uh, a permit uh, application tonight. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Ms. Wright. Ms. Gills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Consider for approval renewal of certificate of compliance for LP Patel and Rena Patel at Beer and Liquor Depot, 2002 East Main Street. Mayor, like the one before, this is a renewal done every two years and the application is in order. Okay. Second. Motion and second, Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Pursuant to resolution 16 RPH 59 adopted by the City Council on November 17th, 2016, conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning approximately 1.9 acres along Florence Road from heavy industrial HI district <clears throat> to light industrial LI district, City of Murfreesboro Administration Department applicant 2016-453. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 28, 2016 issue of a local newspaper. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Mayor McFarland, and good evening, Mayor McFarland, and uh, Members of the City Council, our first public hearing tonight is for property located along Florence Road, just south of the intersection of Florence Road and Northwest Broad Street. This is property that the city owns, and it's currently zoned heavy industrial. It was brought into the city limits and zoned heavy industrial back in 2004 when we, when we annexed and zoned the uh, city solid waste facility property um, in order for its development. Um, it's, vacant, it's a vacant piece of property. It's surplus property, uh, and the city wishes to, uh, to dispose of it. And, uh, uh, but with it being zoned heavy industrial right now, a heavy industrial zone, of course, is our most intense zoning classification, allows the, the widest array of uses. And uh, so the city has, has made a request to rezone it before it sells it from heavy industrial HI to light industrial LI to reduce, essentially down zone and reduce the number of uses that could be developed in the property. Um, so, of course, light industrial being more of a, uh, a less intense zoning classification that doesn't allow quite the number of, of industrial uses that heavy industrial allows. Um, Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on this matter on November 2nd 
and uh, unanimously voted to recommend approval of this rezoning from HI to LI. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, before or after the public hearing. Mr. Romney, do you normally have to, is a down zoning, does that normally have to come through on a down zone? Yes, sir. Even if they were rezoning to RS-15, it would still have to, okay. still have to go through the process. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Long. We're going to need to conduct a public hearing. Um, the rules of the public hearing, if you're uh, speaking on behalf of a, a group, please uh, limit comments to five minutes. If you're speaking as an individual, three minutes. Uh, we want you to come to the podium, state your name and address. Please direct all of your questions to the council. We'll get those answered at the end of the public hearing. Anyone one wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and we'll consider for passage on first reading ordinance 16 OZ 59 to rezone an area located along Florence Road to Light Industrial LI District. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Kels Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Pursuant to Resolution 16 RPH 62 adopted by the City Council on November 17, 2016, conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning approximately 5.2 acres along Old Fort Parkway from single family residential 15 RS15 district to plan unit development PUD district, Old Fort Plaza PUD. Murdauer Bete, applicant 2016-437. Notice of said public hearing was published in the November 28, 2016 issue of a local newspaper. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Our second public hearing tonight is for property that uh, it's more commonly known as the Town and Country Apartments. It's located uh, just to the uh, west of the intersection of um, St. Andrews Drive and Old Fort Parkway. Um, the majority of the property is undeveloped. The very front portion of the property is developed with two uh, apartment buildings. And uh, those apartment buildings uh, were built some time ago. Um, and uh, the property was annexed in 1996, and the property was zoned residential in the county. And when property is zoned residential in the county and there's no companion zoning request, it automatically comes in with an interim zoning classification of RS-15. Well, that interim zoning classification has become a 20-year interim zoning classification because it's, uh, uh, it's still zoned RS-15. So what we have is a legally established non-conforming apartment complex that is zoned RS-15. So the section of our zoning ordinance would apply that states that, that um, if it were damaged beyond 75% of its value that it could not be rebuilt. Um, we have today a request to actually rezone the property for a complete redevelopment of the property. Um, the developer, Dr. Betty, uh, does not wish to keep the apartment buildings. He wishes to tear them down. And there's a uh, kind of a three-pronged uh, development that he uh, that he wishes to build on the property and and Mr. John Gordon with Wiser Consultants will go over that plan in a PowerPoint presentation in just a moment. Uh, but first, the 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 site itself is is a little bit constrained. It's a very very uh, narrow and deep property with a very limited amount of road frontage. So, so it was going to take a a creative approach to developing this property, and uh, Mr. Gordon and his client Dr. Betty have come up with an approach that keeps it all on one lot of record. And because of the limited amount of road frontage, it really limits the ability to subdivide the property. So it really takes a use that, um, that, can, that can be sustained on one lot of record. And so what the, um, uh, what the applicant's uh, proposed development consists of is the northernmost third of the property would be developed with a mixed use building uh, with commercial on the bottom and 16 one-bedroom apartments on the top floor. The uh, middle portion would be an assisted living facility. Um, Dr. Betty uh, owns and operates a, an assisted living facility in Smyrna right now, and he wishes to do the same thing here in Murfreesboro. And the very southern portion of the property would be a uh, senior living complex with, I believe, 52 units. And that senior living complex would have some services that would be provided by the management of the assisted living complex, such as cooking and meals, that would be available to the residents of the senior living complex if they chose to take advantage of those. Uh, so it would be a senior living complex, but it would be age targeted. I don't believe it would be age restricted. Um, 
With that being said, uh, the Planning Commission did conduct a public hearing on this matter on November 2nd and re unanimously recommended approval. Um, the request is as a planned unit development because it's a mixture of uses um, that is the correct zoning. Um, what they were wanting to do really didn't fit in any of our traditional zoning classifications, so they have requested that plan development. And as such, if approved, uh, he would be bound to the, uh, the program book of what's contained in there. Another thing that I wanted to mention about the constraints on the property is that there is, um, with limited frontage comes limited access. So the apartment complex, Autumnwood, to the, to the uh, uh, east that's currently developing, has its, uh, uh, is constructing a shared access on its property. And so the, uh, the proposed development would rely primarily upon the shared access drive uh, with the Autumnwood apartment complex. And that is a shared access drive for the benefit of the development of the subject property. Um, so with that being said, I'll uh, ask Mr. Gordon to come up here and give you a PowerPoint presentation on the proposed development. And I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Thank you. My name is John Gordon. I'm with Wiser Consultants and representing the developer for this project. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council, for letting me present tonight. Uh, Matthew's gone over pretty well the reasons for why we're requesting a PUD rezoning instead of, say, for instance, a, a commercial at the front and, and multifamily at the rear. Uh, in the front, we have a, a multiple uses with residential on top of commercial, which is really only allowed in an MU, which must be in the gateway. And then our senior living building will have some of the requirements of a home for the aged, but not all of the requirements. So those are some of the reasons it doesn't fit exactly within the Murfreesboro zoning. As Matthew showed, the, the locations uh, on this slide, you can see the uh, surrounding red area, which is commercial on the zoning. Uh, so really the frontage of 96 all around it is in commercial and then residential, either single family in the county or multifamily behind it with the autumn wood apartments. Uh, here's the existing town and country apartments. There's a building in the front that is fairly close to Highway 96 and then another building in the rear of the site. Uh, right now this is on a uh, septic system and we'd be connecting to uh, sewer service with the water and sewer department. Um, overall there's three parts. Uh, first part being Autumn Plaza at the front of the site which is commercial on the first floor and uh, one bedroom apartments above. The middle part being the actual assisted living building which is the background of the developers in doing assisted living and then uh, senior living uh, in the rear. And then this slide is showing particularly the front area with the commercial and apartments mixed use. Uh, note on here we have a, a phase line. That phase line shows which parking goes with which building. It's not the same as what the construction phase line will be because we'll need to construct the entire parking area. Uh, with the first building. And here's the elevation of the building. This is um, brick building and, and all the material information that's required to go along with the PUD. The, this is the phase two, which will be second because the uh, assisted living building is the biggest part of the project and we chosen to do it last at least at this point because of the, the additional planning because of the uh, medical aspects inside the assisted living and also it's a, a bigger more complex building. And these are the elevations for the senior living building. And the third phase which is in the middle of the assisted living building an H shaped building with main entrance in the front and then parking along each side. And this is the 
elevation for the assisted living building. The, the wings are two story and then three story in the central area. Uh, this photo is an example of uh, the project. This one actually is two stories in the central, but this is the developer's project that's just finishing up in Hermitage and the, the elevations are intended to, to be similar to this. Uh, we've included landscape signs and lighting as required for the PED plan uh, and all of these will be finalized through the site plan review process. other aspects that are required with, with specifying lighting and signage for the PED plan. And uh, if anyone has any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. All right, we'll need to open the, the um, public hearing for this EUD, anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll consider for passage on first reading ordinance 16 OZ 62 to rezone an area located along Old Fort Parkway to plan unit development, PUD district, Old Fort Plaza, PUD. Mr. Ellison, do you feel comfortable with the, the drainage? I know you guys will pick that up on site plan, but being such a tight lot and all the buildings that are going to be put on there, the detention in the area and the side, that will take care of it. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Sam Huddleston, City Engineering Department. Uh, we met with uh, Mr. Gordon and his client uh, long before they even made a, uh, a zoning application to talk about the public infrastructure and, and drainage concept. and. Uh, Mr. Gordon's very comfortable that uh, that he can make all those things work on this site, and we're comfortable that it'll meet our standards. Okay. What about the progress of the road and the building? It looks like access to that, uh, all the road is on the other property, <laughs> and if this doesn't, how is this gonna phase in where it doesn't create a real bind, I would think, for residents as far as <clears throat> the shared access drive on the apartment complex property uh, that's phase two of automotive apartment complex and I believe it just began construction I believe they just pulled their permits recently um, so the timing should work out rather well because um, um, by the time uh, mr. Gordon and his team submit plans get plans reviewed and permits issued um, uh, the uh, phase two of autumn wood should be nearing completion but Autumn Wood feeds into that same road, does don't they? Yes. So, so how, getting back on Old Fort Parkway, how is there a light? Or we, how, what are we going to do at that? No, there's there's uh, there's no light planned. Um, uh, the traffic turning right will have uh, the traffic going to the interstate and uh, going into town will be turning right. Um, uh, admittedly, there. Could be some issues turning left out of the site during during heavy traffic times. But no, sir, no light is planned there. And how many how many residents in Autumn Wood Department? Autumn Wood. Uh, what's important to note that Autumn Wood's primary entrance is on St. Andrews Drive. Their clubhouse, their leasing facility and their phase one entrance is on St. Andrews Drive, so the traffic can disperse from Autumn Wood, both the Old Fort Parkway or to uh, St. Andrews Drive. I believe they have about, um, I wanna say between 250, 300 units, somewhere, but two, 288, Sam's memory is like a steel trap. <laughs> he says it's rusty, but it's a steel trap nonetheless. Uh, and and um, he just said 288 because it sounded it sounded right. <laughs> no, yeah, you, know, you know you know the funny thing is he's right because now that he says that I remember it is 288. Oh okay. <laughs> right, <man>. Teamwork. <laughs> right, right. When a detention pond and a PUD is listed on other people's property, is that what is how does that bind 
anything happening on the PUD. Well, and is it required, uh, the, uh, Mr. Olson, is that detention plan part of how you're <clears throat> handling all the drainage? And I, th I think Mr. Gordon has actually looked at a couple of different options for detention, one of them being on the adjacent property, and perhaps he can update us on his, his discussions with the adjacent property owner. Yes, we, we met with the Autumnwood developers. They have uh, the moon-shaped de detention pond on their property that's required for them. It's connected into another detention pond on their property, and what we're proposing is joint detention where we will make their pond larger to accommodate the amount of water that will come off our site. Um, we're also planning to use perme permeable pavers for part of our site, and we looked at the 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 option of maybe permeable pavers for the whole site versus how much we can get from detention and combining our detention. And so that's one reason we feel confident that we can meet stormwater requirements is ultimately if we, if, if something happened and we, we didn't get along with the neighbors and, and we're not able to do the joint detention, we can still do permeable pavers to handle most of our stormwater needs. I was concerned that you were relying on that pond. Well, we are, but we've met with the other developers and we have verbal agreements to do this. And as we get to site plan, those will be firmed up into you know written agreements that will be recorded. Mr. Ellison, does this meet our open space requirements or our buffering requirements that we have? That wouldn't be Mr. Huddleston. I guess it would be Mr. Blomley. You wouldn't. Engineering wouldn't really know about the. Although he has the answers apparently, so I, I may need to ask well, him. I mean, you're going to agree with him, whatever he says. So. <laughs> I have for 15 years, so. <laughs> um, uh, no, they they are um, they're providing a uh, and, and let me go back to. Um, Oh, that's his PowerPoint. Yeah, that's, I didn't see that's, anything. That's why it wasn't showing my map. Yeah. Uh, page so page look, 13 has got a landscape, tentative landscape plan on there. Yeah, and, and if you look right here, um, it directly abuts the Franklin Heights subdivision, which is in the unincorporated county. They are providing a, I believe, a type C buffer along that property line with the adjacent single family. And uh, they're providing uh, typical perimeter planting yards around the, the remainder of the site. Um, and we've, we've scrutinized their plan to make sure that they have enough room to meet those, uh, those landscaping requirements. The property to the west here, we've gotten a site plan in for a tire world. So uh, it's zoned commercial highway. Um, so they'll just provide their typical standard 10-foot planting yard along that, uh, that property where tire world will be developing. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? There's no other questions. I move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright? Ms. Scales Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right. We'll move into um, <clears throat> item 14. No, excuse me. I'm sorry. Well, uh, pursuant to resolution 16 RPH 64 adopted by the City Council on November 17, 2016. We'll need to conduct a public hearing to consider amending Murfreesboro City Code Appendix A Zoning, Sections 9, 9 25, 31 regarding seasonal fireworks sales, temporary mobile recycling centers, and temporary vendors. Planning staff is the applicant, 2016-802. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 28, 2016 issue of a local newspaper. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Um, I'm really pleased to bring this particular ordinance amendment to y'all tonight. 
Um, you, you know, we have a lot of repeat applicants to the Board of Zoning Appeals, many temporary vendors that come to the Board of Zoning Appeals every year making application for basically the exact same application for um, seasonal fireworks sales, Christmas tree sales, produce sales, um, uh, shaved ice sales. These are all of our, our annual temporary vendors that we're all familiar with that we see around the city and frequent every year. Um, as someone who has worked with the Board of Zoning Appeals for eight years, these are folks that I basically saw eight years in a row and um, our zoning ordinance requires that all temporary vendors annually come back to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a special use permit. Well, uh, it, it was a very, very rare occasion that a, that a temporary vendor was denied. It was, we, we vetted them, made sure that they met their requirements, and when they would come back and they had been in good order the previous years, they have just routinely been approved. So. What that caused was what we feel was unnecessary um, time spent by the applicants, uh, money spent by the applicants, uh, time and effort by staff, and uh, the valuable time of our Board of Zoning Appeals members, um, all for something that had become very, very routine. So, and I have to give credit to Donald Anthony on our staff. He worked with Mr. Ives in uh, drafting an ordinance amendment that would amend our zoning ordinance to make temporary vending, uh, if approved the first year by the Board of Zoning Appeals and the application is essentially the same application, then that application could be approved administratively in the, uh, uh, in the subsequent years. Now, if, if the application changes at all, so say, for example, the, the fireworks tent is relocated to a completely different location on site than it was the previous year and it needs new vetting, then it goes back to the Board of Zoning Appeals. But for those applications that are the ones that we see year after year after year after year, we want to be able to look at those folks in-house and get them on their way to success without, without them having to spend a $250 application fee to the Board of Zoning Appeals, their time and effort going to the Board of Zoning Appeals meetings, and, uh, and staff's time when staff could be devoting that time to other things as well. Um, another component of this amendment are the temporary mobile recycling centers. Um, and right now we have several in those, of those operated by Goodwill. Um, Goodwill has several donation trailers around town, one at Mercury Plaza, um, and they've had them on South Church Street, Memorial Boulevard. Uh, the only other one they have right now is at Lowe's on Old Fort Parkway. Um, every year those Goodwill donation trailers have to come back to the Board of Zoning Appeals because they're classified as temporary mobile recycling centers. They are approved as a matter of routine because they routinely meet the standards every year, and there's never any objection to them. So uh, we have lumped those into the same category with the temporary vendors, temporary vendors and temporary mobile recycling centers. And the first year, the temporary mobile recycling centers have to get approval by the Board of Zoning Appeals, and then subsequent years, just like with temporary vendors, they can be approved administratively too. We think this is gonna be a very efficient way to handle things, very customer friendly, um, uh, to help uh, our small businesses be able to um, uh, get out there and conduct business without having to, uh, or, and, and eliminating some of the, uh, the uh, steps that they have to take in order to get out there and, and conduct their business. So, so we're really pleased with this, with this uh, proposed amendment. Um, and it cleans up a couple of other things dealing with the temporary vending as well in other sections. Um, Planning Commission reviewed this on November 2nd, conducted a public hearing and unanimously recommends its approval. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions and Mr. Ives, who, who worked very uh, diligently on it as well, is available as well. Great concept, great job. Thank you. Uh, credit goes to Donald Anthony. All right, we'll need to conduct a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll now consider for passage uh, the revision of this ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright? Ms. Kels Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Shacklet? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Good for small business, aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. <laughs> 
Consider for recommendations of the assistant planning director to schedule public hearings. We have a rezoning along Greenland Drive and Olasses Highway from Commercial Local CL District to Plan <laughs> Commercial Development PCD District 2016-438, Annexation Plan of Services and Annexation Petition for approximately 9.1 acres located along Rucker Lane 2016-519, Zoning along Rucker Lane for approximately 6.3 acres to be zoned Single Family Residential 10 RS10 District simultaneous with Annexation 2016-456. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Um, we conducted public hearings on these three uh, rezoning and annexation requests uh, last Wednesday on the 7th, and the Planning Commission recommends approval of all three. Uh, we need to schedule public hearings. Staff would recommend January the 26th. We have one public hearing scheduled that night, which will be a substan have substantial public input. But uh, these three items we feel can be handled on the same night. Yeah, and it, I know we have talked about this, but we're going to have a busy January and February because uh, I know we've got all these issues that we're going to plan on meeting early um, before each council meeting. So maybe just take the, yeah, we'll, we'll be here. Move for approval. 26th. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shackler. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank Mr. you all very much. Mr. Bonley, before you leave, um, one thing, I don't want to catch you blindsided, but I wanted to say this with, with the council here that we're, you know, we're going to have these workshops. <clears throat> Who knows for how long with what we've got got going on? And I know we're going to talk about this later on, but something is the council will will be okay with this. That I really would like us to talk about from the planning side um, is looking at our restrictions on lots that are in commercial areas that all of a sudden are a, a, maybe a vacant lot and then they turn into a car lot, mm -hmm. and how that we. Um, you know, if we have a piece of commercial property that we've zoned for, for a certain use and that use may be a gas station and then that gas station goes away and then we end up having 25 or 30 cars parked on it with no landscaping or that maybe we look to see what other communities are doing that um, allow us to not just have every vacant commercial lot we have as a, a quick and easy spot to put a car lot. So if, if y'all wouldn't mind putting that on your radar with the council's Good with me. Discussion that we could talk about that. Yes, sir. We'll be we'll be researching that for you. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll now consider recommendations of the golf course director uh, to change the number of full-time employees at Old Fort Golf Club. Mayor, members of the council, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, as you know, um, pending my uh, retirement coming up in. Uh, in late January, we uh, have done some reviewing of, of the operation with the golf department and, and specifically Old Fort Golf Club. And we come to you tonight with a, a recommendation to change the number of full-time employees in the golf shop at Old Fort from three to four. Uh, presently, that includes a, a head golf professional and two shop managers. Uh, the recommendation before you tonight is to eliminate the position of the head golf professional and make it into two shop manager positions. Um, and that would be pending the appointment of Mr. McCurry from head golf professional to, to director. Um, with the golf course being a facility that's open seven days a week, 362 days a year, the only time we close is Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Anytime we have a request from employees for either vacation or medical leave or uh, time off, it's, it requires someone pulling a, an additional shift, which makes it kind of hard to get those shifts back off again. Uh, so this would give uh, considerable flexibility. Uh, it would give a better segregation of duties, and with the new city's uh, policy uh, on internal control, it would help us to be able to improve that internal control uh, and not have to have someone outside of a job description actually um, working behind the counter uh, and doing both, uh, both jobs. Uh, the physical impact, there's not, uh, at this time, there's not a request to amend the the budget for this year, uh, physical impact would be nothing with full-time salaries. Uh, and we have, uh, this recommendation would uh, affect approximately five months beginning in February with those positions. 
uh, and it's a recommendation that has been discussed with the city manager, assistant city manager, also uh, Mr. Godwin with the human resources and also with finance. And uh, it has all been uh, concurred uh, with each of those that this, this would be um, a step well taken. So the recommendation that I would ask for you tonight would uh, respectfully approve the, to fill the vacated head golf professional position with the two shop manager position. Be glad to answer any questions you might have. <clears throat> There's no question. It sounds like a good plan to me. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion to second, Ms. Wright. Ms. Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Mayor, thank you. Tracy, thank you, I, Tracy. I know we'll get to see you before your retirement. But uh, we're we're proud of you in the golf the golf course. I appreciate it. And also, uh, really proud you're playing the part tonight. Coming wearing the green jacket. Uh, Master, I have taken your uh, fashion tips, Mayor, for the last several years, and I think with my shoes, socks, belt, long sleeves with my tie, I think I've met everything. <laughs> uh, if I do have the opportunity to come back, I may even try the bow tie next time just to, to show you that I can step up. Well, congrats, then. <laughs> it may season. take me a while, but hey, I just wanted to show you I could do it if, uh, if I put my mind to it. You're absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. We're proud of you. It's an overachiever there. Uh, yes. Consider recommendations of the Assistant City Engineer regarding Town Creek Stream Rec Remediation Phase 1 Design Proposal. Mr. Shuttleson. Thank you, Mayor McFarland, members of the... City Council, I'm uh, pleased to come to you tonight to talk to you about the phase one uh, design proposal from Grace Maloney. I have Ryan Maloney, Vice President with Grace Maloney uh, here as well, and if there are questions about their proposal. Uh, I think it's a pro project and uh, that we're all familiar with. We've talked about it for some time now. Uh, it's been a lot of effort to get to this point. I do have a, a couple of graphics I'd like for our uh, department to show. Just to get us oriented, this is the intersection of Church Street and Broad Street. Uh, the blue arrows there show the current location of the Town Creek conveyance. And if you'll recall, we purchased the three parcels um, there in September uh, with the idea that it would give us a lot more flexibility in our uh, design to uh, address the, the failing infrastructure there in that section of the Town Creek conveyance. And so um, we authorized Griggs Maloney a few months ago to work on a conceptual design. Um, here is a, a concept of what they have in mind with some open daylighted sections as well as some sections in culvert. Uh, and I'll trace that for you right here. This uh, part here would be uh, culverted. Uh, these, this stretch here would be open. Uh, again, a culvert here to maintain the access to McDonald's and then this particular portion would be open as well. Uh, by doing that, we eliminate uh, the need to replace failing infrastructure. And if you'll recall, we've, uh, we've had some failures in our, our very large culverts out there. Um, and there's also the uh, environmental benefit of restoring a stream, uh, which was placed in culverts in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, Ryan's, uh, Griggs and Maloney's conceptual design, let me clear that off right there. Griggs and Maloney's conceptual design uh, includes uh, this concept, and, and that's what uh, we're going to try to reinstall there in the parts that are outside of the uh, culverted sections. And then this is a, uh, an example photograph uh, of, an, uh, of an urban stream, uh, hardscape and, and pedestrian crossings that would, would be a, a typical of what, we're, what we will try to accomplish uh, in that particular stretch. And so with that background, um, Griggs and Maloney has given us a design proposal for $128,550 for phase one. Uh, it's broken up into four tasks, uh, surveying, uh, permitting, design, and then project coordinating, coordination and meetings. Uh, we've proposed to fund this uh, jointly 50-50 uh, between the uh, stormwater utility fee and the TML loan for Cherry Lane phase two. Uh, the beauty of this project as we have it conceived today is that uh, we will replace failing infrastructure with an open stream, but we can also get stream mitigation credits, which we will need 
uh, for construction of Cherry Lane Phase 2. Uh, Mr. Maloney and I were looking at that this afternoon, and we estimate about 300 feet of stream mitigation credits will be required for uh, the construction of Cherry Lane Phase 2, which is projected to start in about two to three years. Uh, with that uh, said, again, the funding, half from stormwater utility fee, half from the loan proceeds for Cherry Lane uh, Phase 2, um, I would uh, ask for your approval of uh, their proposal. Be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Thompson, do you think there will be, I, I know in the photo you showed there's not a walking path or anything adjacent to this uh, trail uh, water system. Do you think there will be potential to have a walking path alongside it? What, um, uh, yes, uh, to, to answer your question, Mr. Smotherman, that's exactly an element that we'll include in that. Uh, what I did not uh, expand in the design proposals, we've asked Griggs and Maloney to include those um, uh, elements along the path um, that we would really see connecting the corner of Church and Broad Street back up to Murphy Springs. Go ahead and include those in design. Uh, we may not construct and fund those with this particular project, but we will at least go through the effort to find out where they need to be, uh, how big they need to be. We, we will engage the uh, Parks and Rec Department and, uh, and others to help us in, in vetting that design. And we'll get it on paper and make sure we've got a place for it. And then I will, uh, once it comes that time, we'll be able to talk with city management about funding that particular element. But certainly the pedestrian elements, a pedestrian bridge crossing the creek is, is part of what we've envisioned. Yeah, with the bottoms project uh, in, the, in the near future, I think that it's, it's, it's almost a requirement that we go ahead and start looking pretty aggressively at that as well as uh, uh, the other side of Church Street. Uh, the sooner the better, I think, because it, uh, it'll, it'll really help stimulate the development, I think, of the Bottoms Project as far as uh, getting it going off to a good start. We, we've been very pleased with the uh, attention that Town Creek has gotten in the, in the Bottoms study. And, and uh, I think, again, to call attention to the uh, gems that we have with Cannonsburg and the, uh, the Lionel Creek Trail, as well as Murphy Springs and Discovery Center, and then being able to link those with a pedestrian connection um, has a lot of merit. Will the additional space, green space, be in some, will there be some attention to that that's not just the creek area? or? You know, uh, 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 Mr. Shacklett, I think I think the answer is yes. Um, uh, what we've asked uh, Griggs and Maloney to do in their proposal is a complete design okay. of the open space. All open space. Uh, you may recall that we have an option on the the old KFC building, right. the old KFC parcel. We have an option for the developer to repurchase that, um, and so we will we will probably do very little on the KFC. Uh, property until we see a clear direction on where that might go. Uh, but certainly on the other two parcels, we intend for that to be all green space. Uh, we'd like to have that fully um, amenitized so that we do have the pedestrian facilities, uh, landscaping, hardscape, uh, uh, perhaps tables, benches, uh, those sorts of things that would make it a, a comfortable place to be, uh, providing shade and comfort. And then uh, the activities around the, the creek and Broad Street as, as part of the attraction. There's no more questions. I'll move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Ms. Wright? Ms. Skells Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Charleston. We'll consider recommendations of the Fire and Rescue Chief uh, with a contract for Sutphin for the purchase of a 100 foot mid mount aerial. Chief? Mayor, members of council, I uh, want to wish you a Merry Christmas also. The, uh, this is for, uh, we issued a request for competitive seal proposals for a 100 foot uh, mid mount aerial. Uh, this uh, would be the largest aerial device that we would have. Currently in our frontline service, we have uh, the maximum height that our apparatus will reach is 75 feet. This uh, is actually a requirement of ISO um, to be within their standards uh, for be able to reach the buildings. Uh, the requirement actually is that you have to reach the roof of each building within your jurisdiction or have a 100-foot aerial. Uh, there obviously is buildings that we can't reach even with a 100-foot aerial, um, such as the Embassy Suites, uh, 
the NHC building next door to us and uh, other buildings within the city. But it, this area would meet those requirements for ISO and improve our standing uh, with ISO rating. It also meets NFPA requirements and other recommendations. Um, as you know, the plan is to put this in the new uh, proposed station four on Medical Center Parkway, which would allow this apparatus to cover both um, the hospital, embassy suites, the other tall um, hotel areas along Medical Center Parkway, as well as the new Justice Center, NHC building, and other uh, larger buildings that are going in downtown. And we feel like it would be put us in a, a very advantageous uh, both requirements and standards wise as, as well as operationally. It is uh, my recommendation to approve this request for. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright. Ms. Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We'll now consider recommendations of the HR Director of Public Safety and Unified Pay Plan Market Analysis Study. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mayor McFarland and members of Murfreesboro City Council. Merry Christmas also to you. I'd like to reflect that to you this evening. I'm very pleased this evening to present on the regular agenda the uh, recommendation for a market analysis uh, being conducted by the Fox Lawson Consulting Firm. Uh, you may recall uh, on council in 2013, Bruce Lawson and Sandy Spellman were here and presented workshops and meetings uh, to both city council, also the leadership team, and department heads with respect to what they call Class Comp 101. That became the foundational meeting for our focus and framework document, which was established in 2013. And of course, our implementation study was based on that document that was produced by Fox Lawson. In this particular proposal, 56 job classifications will be reviewed <coughs> with respect to their minimum and maximums in market. <coughs> 56 job classes, all classifications in public safety will be reviewed. Uh, that means every uh, job classification for police and fire will be reviewed by this study. And of course, 56 is a small number of the total of 220 job classifications uh, citywide. Along with this uh, proposal is a, a comparator recommendation to an, uh, conduct an analysis of between 25 to 35 comparators. And I might also note that Fox Lawson is prepared to pick up additional cities of size uh, with respect to an overlay of the cities that were studied uh, under MAG. So we think that this is a value for the proposal. It's my uh, recommendation that council would approve this recommendation for a fee not to exceed $25,000 work to be completed within 90 days. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Mr. Godwin, I, um, I had a couple of questions, but we're, we're having technical difficulties over here. But uh, two of the things that I can remember for sure that, um, that I had questions on, one was we had had some discussion in the retreat regarding trying to take into account a kind of a full compensation package um, as it relates to, you know, if we say, all right, we're going to take into account Nashville's human resources director, and, you know, their range is the exact same as our range, but they have a pension and they pay all of their medical and they have you know just for example have significantly uh, more valuable yeah a significantly more valuable benefits package or we do then just matching up our pay to their pay doesn't really give us what we really need which is are we competitive in the marketplace um, I see that their project assignment number one here the survey will focus solely on base compensation are we stuck with that or can we take into the full compensation package into into account? Mr. Lance, certainly the council can recommend that. This particular request, as you know, is based on base salary. Uh, typically the, um, the refresh of the data is for the min and max and the ranges. So this, this particular proposal does not include a compensation match of benefits uh, in the market that would involve a uh, more in-depth proposal. 
I thought that I remembered us kind of going down that road, but maybe it wasn't the right. Maybe I'm remembering that incorrectly in the retreat, but that was sort of the. I, I thought I remembered that being part of the discussion. No? Yeah, I, I, I just pulled up the um, retreat two summary that I had prepared and sent to the council with the action items. I know there was some discussion about benefits, but in terms of the takeaways, uh, I did not have the, the benef a benefits comparison as, as part of that. Um, that does get to be a little bit. Um, more difficult to compare than, than salaries. Uh, is, is it, Mr. Goodwin, is it possible that we could, um, continue, is it possible that we can do this study but also get something back from the same group on having a concurrent study looking <clears throat> at benefits at the same time? Is it possible to do that? It is. I, I've uh, I've known Bruce Lawson for seven years, and he's he's a national uh, consultant. Uh, I, I do think it would be within their scope uh, to come back to council uh, with some sort of a proposal to do a total compensation um, review, and I think that's what Mr. Lance is talking about. That's the jargon. It's called a total compensation study. So I would uh, I would be more than happy to contact Fox Lawson with that request. I don't really want to delay getting moving yeah, that was going to be my suggestion is if if the council's comfortable with this piece of it could we move forward with this and then come back at a future council meeting with a uh, additional proposal from fox Lawson to look at the total comp i'm comfortable with that I, i've got another question about this particular thing but i um as it relates to to doing an additional one that to be up to the council to, to decide on that but um let's see here the other and i did want to just clarify um it says they're going to look at between 25 and 35 different municipalities, different organizations to, to do that study. And, and did we only look at eight or 10 with, with MAG? Is that something? There were actually 22 that were used by MAG. So this is an expansion beyond that. Okay, so it is more. It is. Okay, go ahead, Kurt, if you got a question. Yeah, I don't okay. want to yeah, I, I, to follow up on what Rick said, I do think it's important that we have a, a, a total package to look at as far as, you know, what the hidden paycheck is. I think it's a terminology we sometimes use because it, uh, when you start looking at paid lunches and, mm -hmm. and benefits and compensation and stuff beyond just what their salary is, I think that might be something where, where an employee might say, well, yeah, we get paid the same, but they have X and X and X. and, and it, with with those things, that might be one of those competitive edges that another department might have over ours, and I think we're trying to figure out exactly, you know, uh, to, to to place ourselves in a position that we are competitive, and uh, that we do um, uh, reflect what uh, comparable municipalities would would be offering. All right. So one other thing, I'm going to so. All right. Does anybody have any questions on the? Uh, this particular piece of it, and then I'll, I'll add something about the other. All right, so on this particular piece, if there are other questions, I'll move for approval on this. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Ms. Wright? Ms. Gills Harris? Aye. Mr. Lalance? Aye. Mr. Shackler? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. And while we got you up there, can I, I'll just follow up then. Um, I think I want to make this in a form of motion, but let me talk it out first. So I, we, we'd like to also ask you to ask them to put together a proposal to discuss total compensation package as well as I see in the scope of this particular package here there is some mention of studying compression um, what I would like to do is also for to have them uh, put together a proposal for us to follow up on the discussion that we've had at the retreat relative to the hired first, promoted first um, idea that we've floated around for a couple months now uh, and include that in the second part of the proposal so that we can have sort of a second or a third set of eyes look at that kind of from an outside looking in uh, to see if that's something and what the costs might be and they can do all the math instead of us trying to do the, the, the math and the spreadsheet. So I'll make that in the form of a motion. That's just to see if the council wants to do that.
I like that idea. Yeah, and, uh, second. second. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Yeah, I think you know. I, I know we've had uh, Councilman Lalance and and Mr. Lyons have worked on it. I know. Sounds like a second. Um, I know. Our HR directors worked on it. We've had this discussion here recently with a, with both chiefs, and I, I think it's a great idea to let a, somebody else look at it. And either there's, <coughs> it's one of those things that they say compressions, you're going to have to live with it, and there's not a good way to fix it, or it's like you said, <coughs> here's how much it's going to cost, here's how you do it. So I, I yeah. think it's a great. We've got some specific ideas, of course, and I know we've, we've got a second here, but I, um, you know, basically the, the you know, there are some, after the discussions Rob and I have had, there are some kind of specific parameters that, that I'll need to get to you to get to them, okay, that, that I think are going to be the workable parameters. Okay, motion and second. Ms. Wright? Ms. Gels Harris? Aye. Mr. Lalance? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now consider recommendations of the city manager. The first one is de declaration of surplus property. Okay, well, it wouldn't feel right unless I also say Merry Christmas uh, to you as well. Uh, the first item I have uh, for you this evening is the uh, declaration of surplus uh, property. Uh, our firefighters wear a helmet that is certified for 10 years. Uh, we've got over 100 helmets that uh, have reached uh, that uh, age and have been taken out of service. Uh, and since these uh, can no longer be certified for firefighting, uh, I am recommending that they be declared surplus and then given to the uh, individual firefighter that was assigned to. Certainly have sentimental value to them, and I would uh, make that recommendation. Council members, in, in the fire administration building in their conference room, there's, I think, most all the helmets and I was in there when they were deploying to go to Gatlinburg, and so all of these helmets have you know, the firefighter's name on there. And I had told Rob, and Rob had brought the idea of this is what I'd like to do, and uh, and the chief as well. But you know, we give when a when a police officer retires, they get to take their firearm out of commission, and they get to keep that. And I know. Um, this would be something I think that someone's kid one of these days will look back to say this was my dad or my mom's helmet and we can't do anything with them and even if we we donated them they're out of out of standard so it, I think it's a great Excellent. job for both of y'all for for bringing this I know that there there would be a, a kid walking around in someone's although those helmets weigh 10 pounds I don't know how they do it but there would be a, a kid walking around the house with their their mom or dad's helmet on so I think it's a great idea. Sounds good. Next a motion. Motion. Second. And a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Adoption of resolution 16 R20, or excuse me, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Land acquisition along Franklin Road. Yes. Uh, Mayor and Council, this is uh, somewhat of a, a little bit unique item uh, for me to uh, present to you, but uh, an opportunity uh, presented itself very quickly uh, to the city, uh, and it's uh, the reason why I'm making a, a recommendation to to acquire uh, approximately 160 acres on the north side of Franklin Road for future city use. Uh, as we all recognize, the city continues to grow rapidly because we are growing rapidly. Uh, many of the larger tracts are being uh, acquired by uh, private developers for development. But we know as our city continues to grow, we're going to have uh, additional needs for school sites, fire station sites, uh, additional park uh, or even uh, property like we've got in the gateway. Uh, so this piece of property is uh, as close to um, Veterans, uh, Veterans Parkway as Veterans Parkway is to uh, Fortress Boulevard. So it doesn't, well, it feels like it's a little bit uh, out of the city. Uh, in a few years, uh, I believe we will be uh, heading in that direction. Uh, there are two pieces of property. The first is the Richards property. Uh, which is approximately 120 acres. Uh, the second property is the 10 Penny property. Uh, that is approximately 40 acres. Uh, so I did sign the contract, uh, but the contract does say that uh, the contract in all things is subject to city council approval. Uh, what we would like to do is uh, conduct a due diligence uh, on the property. I know Mr. Lalance has mentioned to me uh, since he's uh, hunted on the property in the past, there's uh, some wet uh, soil there that we'll need to pay attention to. Um, but it, it is something we believe, uh, and especially at a uh, cost of $25,000 per acre, uh, 
Uh, this seemed like an opportunity for us to uh, lock down some land, even though we may not develop it for uh, several uh, years. Uh, if you are agreeable with that, uh, there is a re refunding resolution uh, attached that you would need to uh, approve as well. Uh, so it is my recommendation that you uh, approve the contract so we can conduct the due diligence uh, period and uh, potentially acquire this property, both properties. What was the cost? The cost? Uh, it'll be $4 million. It's 100 and how many? 100 and 160 acres. 160. And we paid 40 for? Yes, paid 40 for the McDonald property, and this one is 25000 mm -hmm. uh, per acre. I'm just going to make a comment or two on this before we get going. I'm, um, I have felt like uh, this is, I'm glad it's in front of us. I'm glad we got an opportunity and I know it has to come up this way. I'm not real certain I'm ready to go with another 4 million bucks right yet until we kind of make some bigger picture decisions on, on budget items and things like that. So to me, it's again, kind of one of those things I'll put in the category of, you know, it takes me three months to, to, buy something in my house because I vet it all out and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of one of those categories for me where I'm just not sure, you know, with this piece of property this far out of town that there's not a better way we could spend $4 million for the betterment of our community um, without having to stack some more debt on top of it. So uh, even though I'm, I know we need it and I know it sounds like a pretty good deal. I'm, uh, you know, without knowing how much of it is actually usable, you know, we this may end up being forty or fifty thousand dollars an acre of usable land. So, I'm uh, for that reason, I'm just not ready to support it. What are our options? You know, we really have a couple of things that we, <clears throat> as a council, that I think we need to, to discuss. One of the properties that we were looking back, looking at that we originally were on the 14 for the West Park, the owner came back on that property and it was north of the 40 now that we had, had looked at. And that would be one of the properties that were out on Highway 99. Um, we, we really, as a council, are going to have to make the decision. You know, we really have several different options we we budgeted how much do we budget in the cip for land acquisition um in this year we've uh, 10 million okay and we've spent we spent about five on mcdonald but then you know the council uh, added the second phase of Lytle street since we could coordinate uh, construction with uh, the county and that was a little close to three two two million dollars okay uh, and then the soccer practice facility also required some additional funding so we had a little bit of flexibility there on the, the land acquisition, and we figured we would put this in part of next year's bond issue. Well, I, I, you know, we're, as a council, we're going have to have to make a decision. We've got McDonald property, and then we're obviously going to have to spend the money to develop the McDonald property. So that's going to be a, a number. And, you know, I, we went with the the original first choice of the West Park is across the street from this, and, and we all, I think, agreed that was a pretty big chunk to bite off of 500, and I think it was 540 acres, and the number we had heard on that one was a astronomical number as well. But we know that we need the park property, so at, at some point we're going to have to decide how we almost have an overall game plan of how we're going to do that so how how it's it's tough to negotiate this in public but how loose is the contract that if we is there a way that we get a look-see period that we can look at it and determine okay here's like well, we yeah well, there is a dude and that's what the contract includes is a due diligence period for us to do a phase one environmental study which we would want to do if the phase one you know, surfaced issues that were a problem uh, we'd be able to uh, walk away and get our earnest money back. Uh, if we find issues with the soils or wetlands that would make the amount of acres uh, not as usable, then we can walk away from the contract. Um, you know, there's really two issues. You've got issues with the, the property, which is really what the due diligence period is about. 
you know, than the other issue, and that's, you know, part of the, you know, the discussion, you know, that Mr. Alliance was talking to, is this the right piece of property uh, today? So you really have two different properties, suitability of the property for future development, and do we want to head in this direction? I understand this moved rapidly. We were trying to think uh, down the road in the, in the future, we know we are going to need land in West Murfreesboro. I doubt it will be cheaper than $25,000. So really, we've got to make a, a decision, and there's, you know, a little bit of assessment of how you know, aggressive do we want to be. Um, you know, this wasn't necessarily on our radar, but when the opportunity presented it, we thought there's a chance here that in the future this could be additional parkland. Um, it could be a school site. It could be a fire station site, and it, it certainly won't be cheaper uh, in the future. So you've got a little bit of a, you know, analysis about do you want to move forward at, at this time, and uh, you know, we'll accept whichever direction the council wants to go. But I think you know, my job as city manager is to try to look forward and try to think where, where do we need to be, and is, if this is the right opportunity, we, we should take it. And if it's not, we certainly understand, the buyer will understand, uh, the seller will understand. Is there a time frame in that due diligence period, or is it I believe just it's 30, days. 30 days? Unless we need to do a phase out. Here's the thing, if we end up, if we, if we you know, the, the, the third part about that, I think those two things are legitimate items, certainly. I think the third one is just the overall budget picture. I mean, if we really all understand the budget well enough and our situation exactly well enough that we know that it's appropriate for us to spend an additional $4 million right now, then, you know, then we might move forward with it. I'm not sure I understand that well enough at this point to know that that's something that we have to do. You know, let's say we, that we're using this for a future and 10 years from now is when we actually start to use it. You know, our rolled up cost is no longer $4 million. You know, we will have spent $4 million today plus interest for another 10 years. Now, could we potentially sell it or something like that? Yeah, but you know, we're really, we shouldn't be in the, in the business of you know, speculating on land or you know anything like that. So I mean, I you know, mine is a much bigger picture budgetary situation first, um, and then the other things. You know, the location and the usage issues would be second. Um, and I, you know, I just I know it's got to come up fast, and I understand that, and I'm I'm really appreciative to get to look at it. Frankly, I just am um, not sure I'm comfortable enough to go out on that limb for for that much money with all the other expenditures we have with losing hall tax with you know the, the the solid waste issues we have coming in the next six years i mean we got some heavy duty heavy duty big numbers coming at us so that's just my thoughts on it and that's yeah I, I i'll just say that my crystal ball looks a little differently than i think rick's as far as what's going on in west murfreesboro i, I think that we, there's no doubt at some point we're going to be developing a school out in this area. We're also going to be, probably be looking at a new fire station out there in that area and potentially even a police precinct on the west side. So yeah, it would, sure. uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, will there's. We do there, that there's, out of the city? I mean, will we do that? A mile well, out of the city limits? I think it'll be in the city in the next. Two years. Yeah. To foreseeable future. I mean, at. Uh, Royal I think, Glen. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It, um, I, but but the growth will be going that direction. There's no doubt because that's where the better land is. Uh, I was talking to a real estate uh, agent last night in, in, in Rutherford County. He said that there are less than 95 properties right now that are larger than 100 acres, and it, uh, so so that the opportunity is not going to present itself as much in the future because the scarcity of it, I, I foresee it only driving the price upward. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the 2035 plan projecting the growth that Murfreesboro is going to experience, uh, if, if that is accurate, uh, it, we will have to develop that direction. Uh, there's no doubt that the, the current trend for uh, the development in Murfreesboro is on the western side of the interstate. And um, it's, it's just, so much potential of, of us being able to go ahead and get this land with with not a clear-cut vision of what we're going to do with it today but but there's no doubt we will use this land and um, uh, the, the size of it I think is 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 more realistic uh, I know that we had the opportunity at five or six hundred acres out there in that area but uh, 
and and I, I I had the huge concern at that point that we were going to be house rich and furniture poor, and and so, but but I don't think four million dollars is going to sway our ability to ultimately come up with a plan and say this is where our parks and recreation department is going to uh, be able to use this land or not use this land. I mean, I think there's no question we will use that land if we acquire it. Um, the uh, I, I really think that, you know, just looking at the property from Google Maps and the fact that it has ponds on it that hold water and stuff like that, I, I'm encouraged by that. I mean, that tells me that there's potential that maybe this, uh, maybe, maybe it's not as cars as some of the property that we have looked at in different areas where we know there's lots of sinkholes and type thing. We, you know, I, if it's 100 acres, I'll bet you I can find a sinkhole on it, but the, uh, but, but that's not necessarily a horrible thing in, in the big scheme of a hundred and something acres. Uh, so uh, I, I just, I think it's something we at least need to look at. Uh, again, if we look at it for 30 days and we decide that, uh, you know, uh, that for some reason the land isn't the quality of the land that we'd want to pay $25,000 for on an acre, uh, then then maybe, maybe we'd back off. But, uh, but I, I think that, you know, as leaders, we're expected to be aggressive and 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 understand that uh, there there is there is growth and it's coming and and we need to try our best to be prepared for it. And, and Councilman, I think the one thing, if we have the opportunity at least to have a look see at it, <clears throat> whenever the council back six or eight months ago, we talked about property, uh, you know what, you guys had directed to say let's see what else is out there because we had we had the list on our west park list and we really weren't crazy about any of those so the the part that's more I, i'm having a tough time necessarily passing on you know rob and i went and met with a family that has 385 acres and originally that property we thought was in the the mid to upper 20s per acre and then once that McDonald got bought, which is a much better location. I mean, that could not be a better location than what we could have gotten for a, for a park. Now that property is low 40s. And then we were looking at a piece of property that was behind the fire department that was not, or the fire station 10 that was not on the market. Well, that property then went to in the low 40s. So then we, we talked to one of the owners that owns in this piece of property, the other adjacent property to Royal Glen that's right there at the intersection across from where the new Kroger is being developed. And he priced that to us per square foot, which turned out to be 200,000 an acre was the number there. So I would ask that if we do decide that we want to take a look, see that if it's possible to put in the, the contract that we have more of a concrete plan that comes from administration on more of the financial aspect on here's what those numbers are actually going to entail. And maybe that if we looked at a 10 year hold, if we said we're going to hold it for 10 years, which I don't think we would hold it for 10 years, what's that carrying cost at a current interest rate of, I think we're at 1.8% right now. Or if you recommended that we've got some assets that that are are cash that we don't want to borrow all of it that if we want to we know it's going to be a long-term asset instead of financing all of it we may say look we want to finance 50 percent of it and maybe give us some options that we can at least look at but we know by looking at highway 99 there are not many options on highway 99 that are the acreage that we can go to and we know that we just bought the acreage on 840 so there are no other options that are across 840 once the Shelton farm went away so really if we're going to look at a park on the west side of Murfreesboro it's going to be on the 96 corridor and there's not any acreage back towards Murfreesboro it's only the direction that we're looking at right now so I'm not going to say that this is either the only option that we're going to have but there's not any the other way and this is the first one that's available that's not priced per square foot that's closest to that intersection so I, I'm more of supportive of it in the long getting back to the to the start. I'm more supportive just 
but I think we do need to have some financial parameters before we we get into yeah we're going to do this. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I agree. I think um, you know as a council, it's our job to have a vision. Um, look at the fire station. Everybody, you know, they really. Why would you put a fire station out there? Prime example. Look at it now. It's in use. And for that, I'll make the motion to approve. We have a motion, but I will say Councilman Lance has some great points on, on exactly about making sure that we can afford it. And those are all things that we need to discuss in that, uh, that look-see period that we have. We'll be glad um, to get you some information about that. But in this probably, I would say, Mr. Lyons, depending on what the council decides, if there's a second, needs to be the first thing that we talk about on the first week of January that because uh, that's going to that's gonna put us with a 30-day look-see. That's only going to give us a couple of weeks to really talk about it. And I agree. From I, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and second the motion, but it is with the understanding that we, we do need to look at the financials and make sure that, you know, and, and I like the mayor's idea of potentially funding part of it and then financing maybe half of it or something like that with uh, without having to carry the interest and stuff that uh, Rick mentioned. So... Uh, the, the, uh, the I think I think I think for us not to look at it is is to miss an opportunity. So I, I second the motion. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We now have adoption, or adoption of the resolution 16R23 expressing, expressing official intent that certain expenditures to be incurred in connection with certain public works projects and related expenditures to be re acquire approximately 160 acres of property at 7352 7096 Franklin Road to be reimbursed from proceeds of notes, bonds, or other indebtedness to be issued or incurred by the city of Murfreesboro. And this is just the funding resolution if we decided that we would, we would purchase. We would have to approve this at a, from what you're hearing from us, at a special meeting before this would ever take into account, correct? Or is there a need to do this right now, or would you rather us? Well, right now, the only requirements for us to, to fund the $10,000 to each property oh. on an earnest money. Okay. Could we defer the refunding before closing then? Okay, we'll bring the refunding resolution back to you because we won't need the capital for closing until. Okay. We can present additional information to you. All right. So we'll we'll, we'll defer on this defer, piece. Defer on that. That'd be fine. Thank you. We have several beer permits. Mayor, we have a special event application from the Chamber of Commerce. They have listed their business after hours networking events for uh, 2017. That is efficient for them as they get to pay one application fee for all of their events. Uh, that application is in order and we do recommend approval. The other application is for an ownership change for a restaurant at 1829 O'Fort Parkway. And uh, that application is in order, but they do still need to finish up some building codes inspections. So if you approve that tonight, we would only issue that permit once they have satisfied those inspections. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions. Any questions for Ms. Wright? approval. have a motion. Second. Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. You have one recommendation for a future board and commission appointment, so we'll do that at our first meeting in January. Uh, any statements to be paid, Ms. Wright? Yes, Mayor, there is one. Okay. We have one bill that needs to be paid. Mr. Smotherman, we have a bill to be paid. 
I make a motion we pay the bills. Second. Motion to second, Ms. Wright. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Uh, got a couple of other business items as we discussed and then we're going to have a busy first of the year so we'll get to spend a lot of time a lot of time together uh mr lines if you yeah. um, mayor and i had talked uh, we know um we've got a number of uh, topics that you still want additional um, discussion on uh, so what we're passing out is a calendar where we would uh, begin to meet five o'clock uh, each thursday evening uh, for various topics uh, we're going to try to see if we can get the legislative delegation here on january the 5th um, the multi-family study that was prepared by the planning department on january the 12th on sunday january the 15th a town hall meeting on wednesday january 18th a retreat on finance uh, issues on Thursday, uh, January the 19th, um, budget priorities. Um, and then once we get past those, then we begin to pick up uh, some of the chapters of the comprehensive plan, I believe, that you wanted to take a look at. Certainly, you're free to adjust uh, that calendar, but trying to give everybody an opportunity to uh, set their calendar sooner rather than later. So we'll Mr. Lyons, do you see any potential of us having a uh, session with or a meeting with the legislative delegation after we set the priorities well, I, we've already had our legislative um, you know review where you all looked at a, a legislative priorities I think that would be a, a meeting on January the 5th where hopefully they the local delegation can come and so we can the have delegation a will be here then that's gonna okay. be if, if that's that agreeable with you we'll make those phone calls tomorrow And I, I would ask that on that January, January 5th meeting, uh, if you wouldn't mind, it would be great to have Dr. Gilbert here, if we could extend a, an invitation to her as well. Good. In this January 5th meeting, we're gonna need to make sure that we have time to discuss, I would recommend the workshop for the comprehensive plan. We probably need to move that to, an, to the next Thursday, because we're gonna need to discuss the the park property as well. I, I would think that's very good. You know, if we're the 15th, our, our look see would run out. So, yeah. and we'll we'll advertise these. You know, we have to be specific about what we advertise. Um, so yeah. There may be more than one topic on a Thursday night, so we can continue to make progress. All right. Is there enough room in 218 to have the delegation and us and all together? I think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that one. Good to get I, I think Bill's got a good point. At the school board meeting uh, last week, there were there were a hundred people that showed up uh, to to discuss the not just us. Oh, but I, somebody wanted to hear. What's right, and, and so so I, I would think that if we invite Dr. Gilbert and, um, and and go over some of the topics because of the fact that Mr. Tracy or Senator Tracy and Senator Ketron were really the only two. Uh, that showed up. Mr. I apologize to Mr. Terry. He got there late, but but half the delegation wasn't there, and, and I think they would like to hear from that other half of the delegation. So I really hope that um, they'll have the ability to come to the the, the meeting, and um, I I really think that we probably ought to have it here in ch council chambers as opposed to 218. Just uh, that's fine. That's fine. So it, it, we're looking at most every Thursday, and then we've got the 15th, the town hall meeting that we, in the, I think we talked about having that on the west side of town. And then our um, finance retreat on the 18th. So we'll talk about that. So just if everyone will plug that into your, your calendars, that would be great. Um, Mr. Lyons, we've also, based on discussion that the city council has has directed and, and talked about. I know we've had, and, and you mainly with both chiefs, have had a lot of discussion on the public safety side with several things and initiatives. Uh, could you just give us a brief yeah. update on that? And we'll be uh, sending some information to council probably within the next week or so. And it really is, you know, what, what you might call a, a public safety uh, change management. Uh, we know uh, much has changed in the city. Uh, our employees have done a great job adapting to that change, but what we really want to do is put together and 
in one place that we can share with the council, we'll share with our uh, police and fire personnel. Uh, it'll be a document that will be from uh, not just the city manager, but from uh, both Chief Holtz and, and Chief Durr that'll go over a number of those things. There's some you know, human resource uh, related issues, uh, looking at compressed work week, looking at tours of duty and work schedules, promotion policies, hiring policies, some of the uniform changes, incentives for education, all really positive things that uh, both chiefs have been uh, been working on. We want to tell you a little bit more about that. And then on the capital side, uh, updates on the Doug Young uh, Public Safety Training Center, new communications tower, uh, fire station for relocation, uh, new police vehicles, and uh, perhaps a, a second uh, purchase to the police fleet. Um, so there's a lot of positive things going on, and I think it'll be helpful for uh, the council uh, and our police and, and fire uh, rescue staffs to really see in one place all the initiatives that are underway. They're being worked on individually, but when you put them all together, it's quite an impressive list, and we'll look forward to sharing that to you uh, in the next week. And then I, had, I did have one other uh, item on the, in terms of calendar. Um, uh, Chief Durr and I had a meeting with Bell on the uh, police headquarter today, and uh, we're getting close to a topping out ceremony. Uh, and when we uh, talked to uh, Bell and, and Chief Durr, we really wanted this to be something uh, our community can enjoy, uh, and even the, the children of our uh, police officers. Uh, so on Tuesday, January the 3rd, uh, from 11 to 1.30, we're going to have the uh, beam that will top out uh, the police headquarter across the street in Oakland Park. We'll have it set up. We'll have a, a couple box full of permanent markers uh, where mayor and council, our police officers, their families can come and sign that beam, perhaps put a scripture verse or something meaningful uh, to them. Uh, we'll have that signing uh, opportunity from 11 to 1.30. And then uh, at 2 o'clock, uh, Bell will then take that beam across the street, uh, give the mayor and council a chance to, to make some comments, and then we'll actually be able to watch Bell put the uh, uh, beam on the top of the building. So we want to uh, share that experience with, uh, with everyone. And so if you could mark on your calendar Tuesday, January the 3rd. At what the time, I'm up. sorry? Um, the, the ceremony will be at 2 p.m., but we're going to have the beam in the park uh, away from the construction site. You know, if we're going to have kids over there, it'll probably be a lot safer to be over in the park. So Bell will actually bring the beam across the street to Oakland Park from 11 to 1.30, so a rolling period for people to sign. And if you want to see it come uh, to the top of the building, that will be set at 2 p.m. Okay. Any other questions for... Kurt? Yes, sir. Do you have anything? I'm good. Ready? It's been a busy year. It has been a busy year. We meet next week. I don't think we're meeting next week. Merry Christmas, Christmas, guys. Merry yeah. Christmas. Dale? Merry Christmas to all of our employees and all the city uh, people that labor to make this a great place to live. Uh, yeah. We've had a good year. Yeah. It's been a good year. And we want, on behalf of the council, to let all of the staff know um, Y'all spend a lot of time with us, and like any family, we sometimes like each other some days more than others, <laughs> uh, but we always love one another, and um, I'm, every time I think of this, I'm sad that, that uh, we've got Doug that's not here with us tonight, and um, I know we'll continue to have the young family and our thoughts and prayers my guess is doug's watching us right now so i want to continually ask the residents and and our staff to pray for doug and um, we appreciate everything he's done for us Amen. So, wish murfreesboro a merry christmas and also a happy new year um, drive safely and enjoy your families so we're adjourned.